Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be about how to read a log uh, with your Pro EFI 128 ECU. Um, I know a lot of you have this Pro EFI ECU and they go to the track and they don't really know what to look for. And uh, today I'd like to show you guys what to look for and kind of how to use these these logs because most of you, you know, you go to the track and you, you can't really open these logs because you don't really know what you're looking for. And I find that along the years, it, it helped me a lot by knowing, by having the capability to look at these logs myself. Because, you know, you go to the track and make small adjustments. And uh, that's kind of what got me where I'm at. You know, we started running 11s, 13s five years ago, and now we're running mid-7s. So at this level, you really need to know how to look at these yourself. So it's very important that, you know, you, you know how to you have a grab a laptop, log these runs and uh, to know how to read how, how to read them. So here we are, we're opening a log and this pass is the pass from uh, from Florida from FL2K. You guys probably seen the video where I broke the block in half. This log is that pass. So after I came back, the first thing I looked at is the log. I wanted to see what happened, was the tune off, was the, the turbo break, did the motor lose oil pressure, so all these things going through my head trying to figure out what happened. So first thing I did is I grabbed my laptop and checked out this log. So this is how I do it, it doesn't mean it's the best way to do it, but this is kind of the strategy that I use when I look at a log. I always start with uh, wheel speed. So first thing I do is I put the non-driven wheel speed and the driven wheel speed on the screen. Uh, that way you can see kind of what's going on here. Are the wheels spinning? Um, is it a gradual acceleration? Um, so here you can see the purple line is the rear wheels. The white line is the front wheels. And you can see here when the front went in the air, uh, when it wheelied really high, the wheels uh, stopped turning. And eventually it bounced down and went back up. I went back on the gas. Here, this white line is when I let off and I went back on it. Uh, this is first gear. This is second gear. And this is third gear. And then eventually it blew up at the end, right, uh, 1,300 feet. So this is the first thing I look at. You grab the, the wheels and you make sure everything's okay. Um, if you're running a radial, you always, these are always, you need 100% traction in a radial. But if you're running a slick, uh, you will see a gap in between the two tires. So you want about 15 to 20% spin on the rear wheels for it to have maximum traction. So, but let's focus on the radial here. Um, up here, you have these templates that you can set what parameters you want to automatically come up. I already have this preset. You can basically click here on whatever you want to, to save. And then you go save as and you can save that template to however you want to show up. I find like these are the most important ones to me. Um, you got map, which is uh, boost pressure, RPM, target air fuel ratio, final air fuel ratio. So the target is what we're telling the ECU to target. The final is what actually the O2 sensor is reading. Um, engine horse, uh, the horsepower potential torque, it doesn't really matter. Uh, O2 fuel multi A. This is uh, a multiplier. So this is the ECU is reading off the O2 sensor and it adds or subtracts fuel depending on what it's reading. So if you see here 0.96, that means there was too much fuel and it's pulling 4%. Okay. If you see this, uh, let's see if you can see it higher. See if it goes, I always like to have it a little richer. If it goes 1.05, for example, that means it's adding 5% to fuel because the map itself is a little lean. Okay. Uh, injector duty, trans temperature, it's important to, to monitor. Uh, here, exhaust back pressure too. This is uh, crankcase pressure. I have a sensor on the crankcase that monitors how much pressure is building up. Uh, cooling pressure, it's very important. And I'll tell you why this is important. So I have a pressure sensor in the coolant system. So if combustion uh, escapes through the coolant, uh, you'll usually see a, sky, a you'll usually see a spike here in, in uh, coolant pressure. 
Um, Y-axis XL G, this is kind of the degrees of how high it lifts. I have an accelerometer in the car, five axis, uh, EGTs, inlet air temperature. This is nitrous, all temperature, all pressure, um, and a few more. There's like volts, coolant temperature, exhaust back pressure. That's the turbo back pressure, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so where I start here is, you know, let's see the wheel speed where we launched. So if we grab this point here, this is exactly where I launched, right? So let's go back and see what's going on. So we move over. Uh, this is probably the reason why it wheelied. Um, what, 50 pounds of boost in the first 60 foot, 53 pounds of boost in the first 60 foot which is way too much. Um, but the air fuel is still good. Um, so it's a little rich, which is okay. Um, we're making almost 1500 horsepower in the first 60 foot. So, I mean, that's probably why the car is wheeling. Um, so then I let off and uh, went back on it. Let's do this. Let's take the wheel speed off. Let's keep wheel speed. TPS. So this is you see here the blue line is the throttle position sensor uh, the car wheelied I let off and I went back on it and you know this is first gear this is second gear this is third gear and uh, the first thing I looked at was coolant pressure and you're probably wondering why would I look at coolant pressure because when you're running you know 55 60 pounds of boost on stock head studs stock size head studs you're always worried about this um so if you look closely uh, where is it so look at radiator pressure here right so this is in kpa so ideally you want 100 kpa which is zero psi but the the uh, radiator cap is 19 psi so that's about where it is right now 132 kpa is about there and then all of a sudden right at the eighth it goes up like crazy i mean 350 kpa i think that's about 60 psi no maybe 50 psi so that's a lot so this is an indication that right about here right where it started going up the crack blocked the the block cracked somewhere the coolant is escaping on the piston and uh, either coolant go, went, went on top of the piston or the block twisted. Something's going on where the coolant is escaping on the combustion chamber. So we know that it wasn't the tune itself because if you look at here, target AFR and final AFR, that was always perfect. Actually, it was slightly rich, but there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. As you can see here, see that, I mean, that's when I let off. And then it's pretty much bang on, right? So you got a target of 7.16 and the final was 7.37. Uh, the multiplier is not changing because the air fuel was so close. So yeah, so that's an indication that the, uh, the coolant, the block cracked somewhere, either a liner or one of the bores cracked and the uh, combustion escaped through that crack and uh and cracked it up and then eventually it let go but other things that i look at are let's put the other template back on so other things that i look at are exhaust back pressure too that's crankcase pressure crankcase pressure was fine so we're talking in the first part it was under 100 kpa that means it's in vacuum when it goes over 100 kpa that means the crankcase pressure is in positive and as you can see it goes to 118 119 um, 122 that's nothing so that's there's no issues there it actually goes up a little bit that's when probably the the block lets go but uh yeah uh egts they were all good so you got egt one two three in the log you can move these so let's put this up here, EGT4, you can move all these uh, sensors here. 
So here at the beginning of the pass, we started at, um, you know, 590, 600 degrees, and then it climbed up to about 900, I believe. Yeah, so peak 900. I mean, it's pretty high, but at 60 pounds of boost, I wouldn't expect any different. The signal's a little off. I think I need to wire up the sensors better. Uh, there's a little spike here and there. But if you noticed, all the EGTs are about close to each other. They're not that far off. All right, so you've got 850, 880, 820. Uh, 900, 8, they're, they're not too far off apart the spikes up and down. Um, I look at oil pressure. Oil pressure was rock solid. So if we start from here, so focus on the oil pressure here, which is 519 kPa. Um, the oil pressure stays solid. I mean, even the car lifted in the air. The car never lost any oil pressure. That's the beauty with dry sump, right? Yeah, so uh, there's another here, y-axis degrees. This is interesting. So y-axis degrees is the amount of lift in the front. So if you look at it here, it goes four degrees, six degrees, 14 degrees. So the car is about 14 degrees up in the air. And then it slams down and goes back to normal. Uh, y-axis this is pretty cool xlgs let's take this all out and leave the xlg xlg where is it let's go back here so xlg we go it peaked 2.3 g's which is a lot so that means it was dead hooking and then i let off and then it goes back back in it and it goes up to about 1515 g but yeah that that was a one sorry 2.3 uh, excel g's of force which is pretty cool but anyway this is a small tutorial of how to read a log if you have any questions um, leave comments below give us a follow subscribe if you want to learn more um, if you want, in the next video, we can go through the ProFI software and what settings I have, kind of what I use, boost control, kind of launch timing. There's a lot of strategies that I use in launch. Um, but uh, either, after all, it's a really good ECU. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Okay. Thank you. Take care.